If you have read or watched Gone Girl and you thought to yourself, Amy Dunn did nothing wrong, then this video is for you. Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be all about book recommendations with specific related themes. So whether it's like female rage, unhinged women, or uh, women getting their revenge, basically anything and everything that makes for interesting, complex female characters that are sometimes morally gray, but we approve, we approve. Basically, when you think, good for her. What's the TikTok sound? The one that says like, I support women's right, but more importantly, I support women's wrongs. A little bit of that too. So I've compiled a list of some of my favorite books with these kind of themes. I'm gonna go through them, letting you know which ones I enjoyed, which ones I would recommend. I also have a couple that I've seen going around. Personally, we're not favorites, but I do think that they would work with that team too. And just because I didn't love them doesn't mean you're gonna feel the same. And I might include a couple that are my TBR that I'm hoping to read, or more importantly, let me know in the comment section if you have any recommendations of books that would work with these teams because they're some of my favorite ones. I feel like I love a really complex, interesting female character. I feel like I want more of those always. So let's get to it. One of the ones that I made a point to list number one on that list, even though they're in no particular order, I just really wanted to start recommending it more because I don't see it enough associated with that team. And it is the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. I feel like when you hear about it, you hear that it's a cool mix of apocalyptic setting in a fantasy world. You'll hear about really complex, interesting magic system. Uh, there's some LGBTQ plus representation and there's a little bit of magical school, which I really like. That, yes, yes you'll hear that it's really unique. Uh, the writing style can be a little bit uh, complicated for some people because some, some of the point of views are like second person, so like you, you, you. But I don't feel like I hear enough and I'm part of the problem. I don't mention it enough that this is definitely a revenge story and a really good one. So in that world, the people that have magic are persecuted. So they're either kidnapped and brought to a magical school to be like thought, but mostly controlled. And then uh, people that live further away, like in the small villages, they basically get murdered because they're essentially accused of creating uh, the environmental issues that they're going through. The apocalypse, again, it's it's been repeated a couple of times, hence like fifth season. So it's the fifth time it's happening. So the main female character, uh, got married, she's been hiding the fact that she has magical powers and she has two kids and one day she is out of the village and her younger kid, her son, uses his magical power and her husband kills him. And then when he realizes what he's done, he grabs their daughter, kidnaps her and runs away. So the whole series is about this woman trying to get her daughter back and getting her revenge, which Again, I feel like I need to mention that more often because it's such an interesting premise. I do really like, again, the magic. The magical school is really cool. Some of the side characters are so good. And I found the ending satisfying, which <laughs> needs to happen more often. What's up with like trilogies having terrible endings? But yes, if you're looking for a new adult fantasy and you have yet to pick up this trilogy, do yourself a favor. Yes, it's unique, but it's also a good revenge story. Can I really talk about fantasy books and revenge without mentioning The Poppy War? I feel like if you like interesting, morally gray female characters, you need to read this series. I feel like the main complaint I've read when I was checking on Goodreads is people saying, oh, she's unlikable. She's meant to be. She's meant to be. That's what makes her so interesting to follow. And in that world, there's obviously a big war happening between continents, really. But even within uh, the same continent, you have uh, teams like colonialism, which the author seems to enjoy talking about because it's also part of Babel, her move most recent book, uh, but in this one, it was really, really well done. The main character has had a rough life. She's living, uh, I think it's with family, like distant family. She is hated by them and she's doing everything she can to go to this military school where she will be able to escape that life and, you know, do grander things. And the whole series is definitely heavy on the revenge, not just her, but just in general. The magic system is super interesting. It's linked to the gods, but the more the, you use your powers, the, the, crazier you become. Basically, the gods are evil. And again, very heavy on the revenge, very heavy on the morally gray, interesting, complex female character. It's not heavy on the romance, which I'm not a big fan of. And again, the ending of the trilogy was great. Not everyone is going to be happy. Uh, it was kind of painful, but I'm happy with it. I think it was the right thing to do. And I love it. So if you like a good revenge story or just female rage in general, the puppy war, of course. 
Okay, this one, is it cheating? I don't think so. I wanted to talk about the Villains Trilogy by V.E. Schwab because the second book is the one I really want to talk about because the first book, it's mainly between these two male characters. They used to be friends in university. They found a way to develop superpowers and then they become super villains and, you know, they're fighting each other. And then book two, Vengeful, which is the one I really want to talk about, you meet Marcella, who is my all-time favorite villain. So that's, I feel like it counts. You have to read book one first, but chapter one, you start with her. And it's like her coming of, not coming of age, her origin villain story. And frankly, she did nothing wrong. I am 100% on her side, which I love whenever you feel like that with a villain, because of course that's fun. Uh, so sh she's the best. The only thing I don't like is that throughout the book, she's described as wearing like metallic gold nail polish, which I feel like does not work with what they're saying. But, you know, if that's the worst I can think of. It's a good one. So yes, she did nothing wrong. I am 100% behind her. She is once again fighting. I don't want to say too much because it, it is book two, but you're still getting more back story of the two other characters. The series in general is really interesting, but she, she can do no wrong. The whole time you're just like, good for you. Yes, kill these people. Yes. <laughs> so of course I needed to give a shout out to Vengeful. Another one where it's not the main part of the book, but it's good enough that it needs to be mentioned. It's actually, I have it right here. Haha. <laughs> the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh my, uh, there's a good revenge story in this series. Um, you have the main character, what's her name? Yes, Lisbeth. There you go, Lisbeth. She gets her revenge against someone, which I'm going to keep it vague just in case, but basically she was put through uh, SA. And she gets her revenge. And I mean, she gets her revenge. Good for her. Nobody's gonna read that part and be like, maybe she went too far. No, you go girl, good for you. Go get it, your revenge, because <laughs> absolutely deserved, absolutely deserved. So she did nothing wrong once again. The series in general, I've been really enjoying. I've read only the first two books. I have the third one, my TBR for, before the end of the year, before the end of the year. And um, I really enjoyed book one, how there's like a murder mystery on a small island. It's being solved, you know, 20 plus years later, but still it's fun. And uh, yes, the main male character sleeps with literally everyone, but Lizbeth, she definitely gets her revenge and I love her for it. So again, if you still haven't read it, <laughs> came out what, like 15 years ago? Uh, I was late, but highly recommend it. Definitely push through though. The first chapter or two, it's very heavy, but after that, things pick up. Can I really talk about female revenge and female rage if I'm not going to be talking about Cersei by Madeline Miller? I feel like you have to. I feel like mythology, female characters tend to be perceived very negatively and probably because these stories were written by men and like she's the first witch and like obviously portrayed very badly. So I really like that Madeline Miller is taking these characters and giving them stories like it's really not the right word, but like humanizing them. <laughs> They're not really human, but humanizing them. And um, I love her for it. And I actually can't wait for her. I'm hoping still she will be rewriting, um, retelling, I should say, the story of Medusa. Can you imagine how epic it's going to be? Because I'm sure she will. So like when she does it, it's going to be so good. Hopefully she does. Um, but yes, Cersei, the first witch. I feel like we all know the story of her like changing uh, the soldier of the men into pigs, which again, they deserved. So <laughs> I feel like the story is like the softest, most beautifully, lyrically written revenge story. <laughs> if you have a chance, I highly recommend the audiobook, by the way. I don't know who the narrator is, but she could read my grocery store list and I would be falling in love with her the same. So loved it. Um, but yes, epic revenge story without being uh, as violent, I guess, as a lot of the other ones, which I I'm all for, because again, good for them. But this is like a softer version. Uh, she definitely gets her revenge and I really, really uh, like the retelling. And I'm not a big retelling person, but I feel like everyone knows about Cersei at this point, but it needed to be mentioned. It's definitely one of the best ones that I have read. And it's different from all of the other ones that I've mentioned. So needed a little shout out. I wanted to include one that I've read recently because it's a completely different genre. I feel like a lot of the ones I've been mentioning are like fantasy or just like very, like Gone Girl is not really fantasy, although. <laughs> Might be someone's fantasy, uh, but yes, uh, the, the lies, the lies I tell. In this one, it's like two women trying to get her revenge. So definitely heavy on the like, well, it's a thriller, I guess. So you have the first woman who is a scammer. She grew up and this man basically ruined her mother's life and her life uh, whenever he 
stole their house from them uh, and then she becomes homeless, her mom dies, like it's very tragic. And ever since then, she's been scamming people, trying to, well, scamming men really, trying to uh, survive until she gets her chance. And that's how the book starts, her trying to get her revenge on that man uh, as he's running uh, politically. I don't remember exactly what, what he's getting, but she basically wants to ruin him. And that's the whole story of the book. But you also follow a second point of view where this woman thinks that the scammer ruined her life which I don't agree with, but whatever. Um, and then she's investigating her. So like you have these two point of view. So it's definitely revenge for both of them. Definitely some uh, unhinged moments, but it was good. I feel like it was a pretty solid uh, revenge story if you are in the mood for something that is more like a thriller than all the fantasies I've mentioned. The next one I hesitated in adding it because quite frankly, it's, it's a bit pushing it, but it doesn't matter. Um, I wanted to mention very quickly behind her eyes, because like maybe it counts, maybe it doesn't count. I feel like if you've read the book, you'll know why I'm like, I don't know if it counts, but I'm allowing it because it's definitely one of the most unhinged books I've ever read. The ending, there's a reason. I don't remember exactly what the hashtag was, but it was something like, what the F is that ending? Absolutely. Uh, there's also a TV show if you prefer trying it that way. But yes, it was definitely completely unhinged, completely unhinged. But I ended up loving it, even though on paper I should not have, but it needed to be mentioned. Come on. I wanted to mention two other ones that weren't favorites, but they're definitely, they definitely work with these themes. And I feel like just because, again, I didn't give them five stars doesn't mean you're going to hate them. But there are still bits in the books that I really enjoyed. So I'm including them. The first one is Night. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, but um, this book is unhinged and rage inducing. I feel like I was the one raging because you're following this woman and she's slowly losing it. Uh, she just became a mother and her husband is not helping her. She's stuck with the baby. She had to basically stop working and she's trying to make friends with other moms. The other moms are basically like think MLMs, like nothing is going great and she's starting to slowly lose her mind. She thinks that she's basically transforming into something. Like she, she doesn't know what's going on. And frankly, her life is my worst nightmare. Like literally could not think of worse. This just sounds absolutely awful. So if you are uh, a new mother or if you, don't want to be a mother. I feel like any woman could relate to this. Uh, this fear or like if it's your current life, it might feel great to go through her as she's going like slowly losing her mind. <laughs> but yes, uh, absolutely unhinged women. It works really well with that team and I loved it. The only thing is the second half, like the ending, personally, I'm not happy with it. That's why I'm not including it in my favorites. Everyone is gonna feel differently about it, but I wanted something very different, very, very different, but do recommend it. It's worth checking. It's really short too. I think it's about 200 pages. So like definitely worth picking up. I also wanted to include Bunny, even though once again, I didn't care for the ending because it absolutely works once again with the whole unhinged woman because this book is straight up unhinged. <laughs> you have this woman, she's a grad student and she it's like a really small class and she's stuck with these other girls that keep calling each other Bunny. And she's obviously like looking down on them. Like she's being a bit you know, snubby about it. Um, but it's probably just, you know, is she feeling insecure that she's not friends with them? Like they are all friends together. And um, I don't want to say anything else. You have to experience it yourself. It is completely unhinged. I just wish once again, the ending had been different, but again, everyone will feel differently about it. But if you like, this could count a bit like dark academia, maybe a little bit like magical realism, maybe um, it's, it's weird. If I do a part two of the weirdest books I've read, this will be in there. It's just so strange, but I just wish it went differently towards the end. So do recommend it if that sounds appealing to you. So these are some of my favorite like unhinged women, female rage, female revenge. Uh, let me know in the comment section some of yours because I'm looking forward to reading more of these. I feel like I should do part two because I have so many interesting ones, but some of them I've only read the first book in a series and I feel like I won't be able to give justice to the series if I haven't, you know, before including them. So just in case. Uh, but yes, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe. Let me know once again in the comment section your favorite ones because I want to read more, add more to my TBR. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out, including I did one recently about uh, big books that were worth the hype or not. And then I'll include my most recent book haul because who doesn't like a good book haul? And I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye.